Now, before we begin, I'm going to answer a question that most of you are probably going to want to ask me after you've seen the insanity of this session here, because this is an AUM session. And the question you're going to want to ask me is, why in the world would you do this? And the answer to that is because you can. AUM wasn't made for doing stuff like this, but you can do it. Besides, I like bragging about how insane I am, and you're going to realize how insane I am. So what we have right here is an AUM session with a bunch of plugins and stuff set up in a way to become a synthesizer. A synthesizer that you can play with this button interface and then also control the internals of it with these controls here. But there is some editing magic going into this because there is no way you can load an overlay inside AUM. So what I've done is I created this overlay inside Affinity Designer and then I exported it as a transparent PNG and I put it on top of the video of the screen recording of this session. So if I remove it, this is what we're left with. And now you can see that this is an AUM session. So if I close these windows down, then we can see that what we have here are 32 channels plus one. And this last one is just for my narration so that you can hear what I'm saying. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back here to the beginning with a bookmark and I'm going to open up these four instances of KB1 by Kai Aras because that's what these are. This is a MIDI keyboard slash MIDI CC controller app. It's the best one on iOS because it can do everything. It can do everything from touchpads to button interfaces to knobs and even full keyboards. And it's an amazing, amazing app. So what we have here is... Thirty-two buttons, each of them playing a note in this synth. And then what we have up here... And there's a lot you can do inside this synth. So what's going on in these other 32 channels? Well, I want you to look down here. Here you can see that you have different notes, right? D1, E1, F1, and on and on. And you can also see their frequencies. You're gonna understand why I've written these down here. What is going on in here? Well, as you can see, there is nothing loaded up here, right? Wrong. There is something loaded up here. You see, all of these 32 channels, they're basically playing a sample. So what I'm using is a file player. If we press here, we can see that I've got a sample loaded here. It is really short and I've got it looped. And so what's going on is when I press down a button here, you can see that play enable lights up. And we can hear sound. However, the sequencer have to play in order for this to even happen. Because if we stop the sequencer, there is no sound because it's not playing the sample. I keep saying sequencer, what do you call it? The internal timeline? Either way, this has to play in order for this to work. It kind of works like a tone wheel organ with 32 tone wheels. All of the tone wheels are basically just a looped single cycle sample, which also makes it so that this is a 32 voice synthesizer. You can play all of the buttons all at once, if you had 32 fingers, that is. Now, there are two things going on here, actually, because when you're pressing down a button, it's not just play enabling, it's also setting the playback rate of the sample. Remember, it is looping. And in order to get the right pitch, you have to get it to run at the right speed. So if we go into the MIDI settings here, we can see that if we go here, go to the file player, 
we can see that I've got a trigger for play enable, and this is what starts the playback. And then I've got one for rate. And here is where you're gonna start realizing that I'm insane. You see, when you're working with MIDI normally, you're working with ticks from zero to 128. But in AUM, when you're setting up your values, you are working in percentages from zero to 100%. I absolutely hate it. So what I had to do to set this value up right in order to get the pitch right in all 32 channels was I had to use a tuner and I did that. I went through all 32 channels setting this value up right so that each and every one of the buttons would send out the right value to the rate control of the sample playback. This took a very, very long time because this thing is sensitive. So you can sit there, you know, you're fiddling it with your big finger on the screen here and you're almost completely right on pitch and then you let go and it jumps. And it just kept on doing that for all 32 channels. So it took an excruciatingly long time to do this, to get the pitch right on all of the buttons. And you know what the worst thing is about all of this? This synth cannot be sequenced. Are you sure about that? Yes, John, because this synthesizer is not using MIDI note data, it's just using CC data. Now here comes the next silly thing. If you ever wanted to change out the waveform, well, it basically means you would have to go into each and every one of the file players and load a new waveform into all 32 channels. And so I realized quite quickly, that would be horrible. And so I had to make sure that whatever I was doing with this synth at the output end of it was to add something that could drastically change the way that the synth sounds. You see, a little while ago, Bliss actually released something called Bliss Face Mutant. And this plugin is excellent because it can really mess with your waveforms. And so that's actually what I'm controlling with KB1 by Kyaras. I am controlling various things inside Face Mutant. I also wanted to add some effects and stuff. And the effects I added was basically Quattro Mode here by Audio Damage in where I'm using a frequency shifter. And then I also added a filter from JAF Filter Collection. It basically contains a whole list of filters. It is absolutely insane. I love this thing. Then I added the Rat Shack Reverb because it sounds really old school. And then at the end here, I've got a saturation module from AUM itself because these are built in. And then lastly, I'm using the Audio Kit Reverb, which is free. And that's it. That is the synth. It took ages to put this together, ages. And in the end, I can't even sequence it. It sounds really, really cool, but it can also be very, very buggy. Like the fact that the keyboard just keeps locking up several notes when I play it. It happens over and over again. Not to talk about the fact that I forgot to save a preset for one of the things inside KB1 here. Whenever I touch the pad, it resets to a zero state, basically closing down the filter. It's really annoying. And to fix it, every time I have to drag open the window, find the settings and fix it. And I could just save a preset, but I keep forgetting and it's been driving me mad. And apart from that, actually accounting for all of the setup time, well, apart from just sitting down with a tuner, fighting the interface, the hundred percents and the it's driving me up the wall, just thinking about this stuff. Well, you also have to take into account that you have to build the actual button interface and the knob interface and make sure they all have the right CCs. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to explode. So if anyone in the audience is asking themselves, should I do this? my answer to you would be no god no god please no no now if you like the work i do here on the channel give me a thumbs up and if you don't like the work i do here on the channel 
then uh, you got bad taste and you're a poopy poop head. If you want to support me financially, then I've got a list of links down below that you can check out. Uh, you can also find my music in those links. And uh, if you don't want to do any of that, then that's fine too. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Bye.